some painty inspiration to get you doodling with your paints and pens today and I'm back in my junk journal with speed paint of a page that I actually did last week. Now the aim of this piece, well, actually there wasn't a really big aim for it, I just wanted to fill a page loosely with colour and some mark making and I had a very specific colour combo in my mind for this one. So the only thing I decided upon when starting was the colours. I've picked two warm colours and five neutrals for this and I have an art challenge for you which I will go into later in the video but let me get this piece started. Oh, and the other thing that I decided before starting was that I was going to use a palette knife to apply the paint on this first. And I really like using the nozzles on these paint tubes. You see me using these quite a lot. Uh, they're great for controlling the amount of paint that you can put on a piece. So that's perfect for something that's quite small like this and really handy when you're adding it directly to the page. I get questions about these nozzles, so for those of you who haven't seen them yet or aren't sure what I'm using, I'll link them up, well they're always linked up when I use them with the rest of the products in the description, but I'll also put a link to a quick video that I did that tested them out on different paint brands as well. Now the idea of this paint layer was not to over mix the colours but to layer them up in kind of patches over the page until I was happy with the coverage. And the paint dries really quickly because, well, I'm spreading it out really thinly, just like I did with that plastic card a couple of weeks ago. Do you remember that was the black and white flower that was on quite a dark background? So the colours I'm using today, they are all listed below as well. Starting with Venetian Rose, Orange Azo and Naples Yellow Red Light. And I really like these three colours together. The warmth, the pinks and the orange contrasting with the neutrals of that Naples Yellow Red Light. I think it works quite nicely. But I also have another colour in mind that I wanted to add to this. And it's particularly yummy because it's just such a great contrast colour. But I won't spoil the surprise, so don't peek at the colour list just yet. <laughs> So I wasn't really sure where I wanted this page to go other than, you know, starting with the colours and that colour combo that I have in my head. So I did add some marks to this and first with an orange ballpoint pen. Now also part of my colour combo is a raw sienna and I, I actually have a lot of difficulty with this colour. You know, I generally, I love colours, all sorts of colours. I have sort of like, you know, some of my favourites that you see me go back to again and again. But the raw sienna, well, I love the idea of it. And when I pick the tubes up for my colour combo, and I've done this a few times, this is not just in this project, I've done this in other projects as well. They look great in the tubes and it looks really fab with the colours I pick with it. And then I put it on my project and for some reason I just have this kind of reaction to it, like an aversion. And I really want to make it work because in the tube it looks great. On project, I don't know. As soon as it goes down, my head says, wow, <laughs> that's, nah, that's not working, that's messed up. And I think it might be because this neutral is just one of the most opposite you can get to the dual colours. And uh, I'm often attracted to dual colours, so they kind of are where I go to first. And I seem to be able to cope with other neutrals and earth, to earth tones as well, but this one is definitely my killer's heel. So I try very hard to keep going and you might have spotted that I've also picked up a little bit of red on my brush and that was just from my palette and was totally accidental and not part of the colour scheme but you know once I put it down there I just went with it. Anyway so I decreased the use of the raw sienna and did some mark making with it and that made me feel a lot better. I still think it works nicely with this colour combo which is why I sort of just kept going with it but I think for me, I just needed to use it in small bits. And when I put it down first, I'd used a big sort of swathe of it. <laughs> and yeah, it didn't really work, but I like, I like using it in little parts here and there. And anyway, we're still in the early layers of this, so I can sort of break up those bigger areas with more paint and ballpoint pen marks as well. And that's how I keep going and keep building on this piece, letting it dry if I change up the colours or change the material that I'm using. 
So for instance, when I swap to the brown ballpoint pen, I, I let the paint dry completely before I try and use that over the top. And I was actually working on three pages at once when I did this one, so I could swap in between the different pages to let one dry and then swap back and you know just carried on working like that between the three. And I like working like that because it gives me a little bit of breathing space as well. So if I want to let a page rest for a bit, you know, maybe I'm not quite sure where it wants to go or I want to sort of revisit my options then swapping in between gives me that breathing space that I need and also it helps me not to overthink it as well because it doesn't give me a lot of time it just gives me enough time to say put a layer on one piece and then go back to the other piece so you're still moving them along quite fast but I have talked about this before in my other videos but I haven't actually spoken about it for a while so I know new viewers to my channel you might not have heard me talk about this a lot of the pieces that I've been doing recently have been single pieces or they've been ones that I've worked on in a session with a group of other pieces but they might have been unrelated pieces so that when I come to do the voiceover I don't tend to talk about those other pieces so much. But this one was part of three pieces that had a connection between them because they were all done with layering and also with mark making as well but they've all been done with different colour combos so you probably will be seeing at least one of those pieces in a video coming to YouTube soon-ish not quite sure when yet, I haven't edited that one yet but I did give my patrons a peek of all of the ones I worked on that day and talking about Patreon, did you, did you download the free to everyone colouring page? Have you used it yet? Let me know how you got on with it and what you think because I, I've been thinking that if people like it then I might do more of them. And you can let me know in the comments. Leaving me a comment on a video is fantastic. Thank you everyone who does that. But you can also let me know by liking my videos and sharing them too. I mean, it really does help with the whole YouTube thing when your videos get shared and liked and commented on. So a massive thank you to everyone who does that. I really do appreciate it. Now, I wasn't really intending to use black and white in this colour combo. That wasn't there when I started this piece and they were later additions. But I think they worked out quite fine. So starting with black anyway, I used white a little bit later and I wanted to use a bit more of a fine marking so the black pen seemed to be the best option at the time. I'd already used that brown ballpoint pen so I didn't think a black ballpoint pen would add any more there, it probably wouldn't be that discernible from the brown. So the black paint pen seemed like a really good option. And I added a few shapes and dots and lines, just a little bit of mark making there. And it looks really stark against the other colours at the moment, you know, it's really quite noticeable. At least the other, you know, when I used the ballpoint pens, they were very similar colours to what had already been put on, whereas the black kind of just stands out, doesn't it? But remember, I do have this mystery colour in my head as I'm working through this, something that I did decide upon at the beginning as part of my colour combo. So when I added the black, I already had this mystery colour in my head, So and this balances with that. Can you guess what the mystery colour is going to be? No peeking at the colour list in the description. Now before that mystery colour goes on, I wanted to add some more contrast, so I lightened up the Naples Yellow Red light, which is already pretty light, but I added some white, white paint to it to make it even lighter, and then it would just sort of stand out a little bit more to the layers of that colour that I've already put on there. And once that was down, I broke that up a little bit so it wasn't so blocky with the pink and reinstated some of those circle motifs that I'd put down with the brown ballpoint pen. Okay, wait for it, we are almost there almost mystery colour time and it's it's Payne's Grey. 
Yay! High five to you if you guessed it without looking in the colour list in the description. And I've not used Payne's Grey for ages. I think Indigo has been kind of nudging the Payne's Grey out recently. And where I would usually have in the past sort of reached for Payne's Grey, I'm now reaching for Indigo. But Payne's Grey is still one of my favourite neutral contrasts. It is just such a beautiful contrast. But this tube had, had actually slipped in, <laughs> slipped down at the bottom of my storage where I store these paints. And when I was looking for this particular combo of the orange and the pink and the Naples colour, the Naples yellow red light, I was rooting around and I found the Payne's Grey and that was exactly the contrast colour that I was looking for. Otherwise it might have been the indigo if I hadn't have <laughs> re-found my Payne's Grey. But I definitely think this works better. And another thing that I hadn't intended to do on this piece, and that was to mix some white in with the Payne's Grey to make other greys. So actually I think that here I've got six neutrals in, in this piece, not, not the five that I said at the start. So there's white, there's black, grey, uh, Payne's Grey, raw sienna and the Naples yellow red. So this is really the basis of your art challenge that I was talking about earlier. And the challenge is to use lots of neutrals in your next piece. And you might be used to using whites and blacks. They are colours that we, we go to quite often, aren't they? I mean, they're very useful colours. But try extend it a bit. Try and use some greys. Try and use some buff colours and some browns and see how you get on with them. And you can use them any way you want, so you could go all neutrals if you wanted to, but do try and mix them up. So if you use greys, blacks and whites, try also to maybe get some buff colours in there too. See if you can just fit in as many neutrals as possible. Or you could use them the way I've used them today, and that's really as accents and contrast to a warm colour set, or you could use a cool colour set too and try them out that way. But, you know, just see what you can do with them and have lots of fun with it. And if you do share on social media, then tag me in because you know I'd love to come and have a look. And my social media links, well, they're all in the description. I've got more mixed media ideas for you here. So you could even try out your neutral colour combo with these. So watch them next and I'll see you there.